Hello, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk. This is the first in our series of Halo painting tutorial videos. So in this video, I'm going to be painting a metallic purple scheme for the Covenant. So as you can see here, I've got a CCS ship. It's already been primed in black primer, and here you can see an example of the scheme we're going to go for on this little corvette. So we've got a like metallic sort of gradient in purple going to magenta with some blue lights also. So we're going to begin by giving this model an undercoat of lead belcher. Now I'm using the Citadel air range because um, in this tutorial I will be using the airbrush. You can do this with a regular brush but it'll be a lot easier to achieve this effect using an airbrush. So as you can see I've got the model on one of its flying stems, I just put masking tape around it just to have a better grip on it and also to stop any paint from getting onto the stem itself. So I'm just spraying this lead belcher and the coat all over. As you can see it goes on fairly smoothly with the airbrush. So just work your way around the ship. I'm also going to do underneath as well. Now in this tutorial I'm not going to spend as much attention on the under, under side of the ship as I am on the top. So again you see I'm just working my way around with the airbrush, getting a nice even coat all over. There you can see, it's a bit speckly, um, that's just the nature of the uh, GW metallic paints. You can see it's sort of a bit speckly. Um, there are other metallics available which will probably do better, but these are just the ones I have on hand at the moment. So I'm going to take some Runefang steel, also from Citadel Air Range. This is going to be for our highlights. So it's entirely up to you and um, where you place your highlights. Um, I'm going to be going for the front of the model and around the sides and on the back as well, and just a little bit. Um, towards the middle of the model. So I don't know how easy it'll show up on camera, that's a fairly subtle highlight. You can see it's just going on just on the front there. Now you could work your way up through metallics, maybe use an iron brake going between and then work your way up to Runefang steel, but I didn't really see the a need to do that here. Now you can see I'll just do a little bit in the centre, just some on the sides, some on the back also. These are going to be the areas where our magenta is going to go on. I don't want that to be a lot lighter. I'm just going to do a little bit on the underside as well. Now with the underside I am just going to do all that just in the purple metallic, but that will give us just some highlights as well. So you can see it doesn't show up greatly on the camera, but you can just sort of see it as it's being applied. I'll just go over these areas just again, just to make it a bit stronger. So with that done, we can now begin to add the purple. So I've got some ghost tint, ghost tint purple from the Badger's Minotaur range. And I absolutely love the ghost tint colours, I think they're fantastic. When you apply them, it's it's well worth just being very light on the trigger and just dust them on and just build up gradually because if you go on too heavily they're just going to pull up and you won't get the desired effect. This is why I prefer to use them with an airbrush rather than a regular brush. As you can see I'm just going very lightly in the middle and I do actually go a bit too heavy to begin with. You can just sort of see it's where it pulls a little bit. So with the rest of the model I'm just going to be very light on the trigger. And you want to go over all the areas that you want to be purple and just leave the areas that, that you want to be the lighter magenta. It doesn't matter if you overspray onto these areas a little bit, but you just want to build up the colour just where you don't want the magenta to be and just where you want it to be purple. So just take your time with this and just go around just building this colour up. So 
So now you can see it's starting to become more and more metallic purple. Uh, you can see as well um, where the sides are on the top of the ship. I do go back to them later on as well and paint them. And now I'm now spraying them side areas. You can just see on the front as well it's pulled up a little bit, but once it dries it won't be as noticeable. And on the underside of the ship, I'm just going all purple here. Obviously you can have nice magenta gradients and everything on the underside of your ships as well. Um, just for the purposes of these tutorials I'm not really bothering with the undersides of the ships too much. And I don't think I'm even being as light on the trigger with, it, with this, but you should really. build up that pebble on the underside as well. And let's go around the sides as well, just making sure you get all the areas that you need to get. And that's where the purple goes tint done, so we can now move on to the next part. So you are, you need to make sure this ghost tint is dry before you go on to magenta and give it a good hour or two really then we move on to the magenta so same thing applies with magenta as well just do just do light passes just over the areas where you want the magenta to be so I'll start with the front of the ship just gradually build up that magenta. Now in this tutorial I didn't put as much magenta on the front as I should have done really, so that won't look as strong as it does on the Corvette, so just be mindful when you do it, just to, um, you know, you can do it as heavy or as light as you want, but for some reason I, I don't know if, I just didn't see like that wasn't on as heavy as I'd like. You can just sort of see it looks nice. Um, it certainly looks alright on camera. But in person I would have done that just a little bit heavier. But um you can see and um, what effect is I'm going for here. I mean these videos are just to show technique. They don't have to be sort of spot on accurate of every detail. As you can see just from them two ghost tints we're getting a really nice gradient effect now. I really like having magenta just sort of makes the model pop. And it's a bit hard to see on camera with the reflections in some areas, but you can see just how nice this magenta looks on this model. And I'm just going back in again in some areas just to make it a bit stronger. You see there's a really metallic shine on it there. So I do apologise if the camera doesn't pick up as well as it should. So I've now given both of the ghost tint colours plenty of time to dry. I think I left them for about four hours. Ideally you should leave these um, overnight or 24 hours to dry, really. But if you leave them for about at least two to four hours, just make sure they're, like, just, they're not sort of tacky. Make sure they feel dry. But I certainly recommend at least four hours, really. So now that they are dry, I'm going to come in with some satin coat varnish from Minotaur. Now you can use any varnish here, whether it be gloss, matte, satin. Um, it's really up to you, um, depending on how shiny you want the ship to be. But this step is vital. Um, if you're using ghost tints, then you must, must varnish them. Because as soon as you put any other colours over the top without varnishing them, the colours will bleed through, and that's not what you want. So I'm just giving it a very quick satin varnish all over. So 
So I'll leave that for um, at least two hours to dry as well um, before we can move on to the next part. So the next part I'm going to do is some OSL for the lights, that's um, object source lighting, so basically um, a glow effect for the lights. And we're going to be using ghost tints again, but we're not going to be using metallic colours for the base this time. So I'm using Administratum Grey from the Civil Air range, and I apologise that for some reason I didn't show off the pot, as I usually do with colours. So I'm just very lightly just building up where I want the glow effects to be. So I'm being very gentle on the trigger here just to build up very gradually because obviously I don't want too much of this. And you see it building up on the back. I'm apologize if the airbrush is uh, shy at the moment. But you can just see the colour just appearing on the back there. Again, it's a bit hard to see on the camera with all the light reflecting off the metallic colours. So that's why I keep holding it just up to the camera so you can see where the paint is being applied. So just work your way around um, anywhere where you want these OSL effects to be. You might choose different areas to me. I've just sort of gone with where they are on the box art. And you see it just came out a bit um, strong there, paint is just a bit too thin, so it's gone a bit light on the trigger. But... Now I'm just building up a bit more around the edges here. In hindsight, maybe I should have given this paint a bit more of a vigorous shape before I used it, but you can see the effect um, building up quite nicely there. So the next stage is to highlight these areas. So to do that I'm going to take some white scar, again from the Citadel Air range. Of course any white airbrush paint will do. And I'm just going to do very small highlights just in the centre of these lights. And I'm just roughly where I want the light effect to be at its brightest. So I'm being very gentle on the trigger and getting quite close to the miniature so I can get a smaller spray. So with them highlighted, we now go into the last step, which is to apply some ghost tint plasma fluid. Now plasma fluid is my favourite um, paint ever, it's just such a nice colour. Um, I've used it in one of our previous videos before. It's a really nice um, turquoise blue colour, which I think will really set these lights off and really make them pop out from the rest of the miniature. So again, as with applying the ghost tints before, just very light on the trigger and just build up the colour slowly. So I'll start with the light at the front. You see that just came out a bit too thin there so I'm just going to move on just to the other areas and then come back to that. So again, as I just said, very light, building up gradually, so I go round the whole miniature, just doing the first little layer before I will come back round and continue with the colour. You can see a lovely uh, turquoise blue really stands out from the rest of the, the model. And once um, this colour is built up even more, that will really look really nice. And here's the final ship, just paired with a little Corvette there. Now I really like this metallic effect and I really like using the ghost tints. You can see, um, as I explained earlier, that I would have gone heavy on the front of the ship so it would have matched the Corvette. As for the little um, green lights and engine glow, these will be covered in a later video as they all apply to all the different um, methods of painting these Covenant ships. 
So, as always, thank you for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please give us a like and subscribe. I'm still looking for a few more suggestions for UNSC ships, so if you have any other um, colour schemes or techniques you'd like to see for UNSC, please leave a comment below, and I will see you all in the next video.